So it's no mistake that today, in 2020, there is a high demand for semiconductors. This has been going on for a couple of years now. Everybody wants chips. Cars are being sold with parts disabled because they can't get the right silicon needed to build those components. Now you might think, well, it's only a microcontroller for like a seat changing mechanism, but the amount of silicon that goes into those devices matters, and there's a supply chain of hundreds of thousands of components for each one. So there is insatiable demand for manufacturing facilities for silicon. As a result, the major fabs in this space, Intel, TSMC, Samsung, are putting down billions and billions of dollars in promises to build fabs for the future. What's your minimum specification? On today's docket is Intel's announcement about its investment in Europe. Now, Intel to date has really been speaking mostly about its investment in the US. Talk about homegrown semiconductor companies and playing off that Patriot angle to try and uh, get some extra money out of the US Chips Act. Today, instead, Pat Gelsinger was talking about how to bring more manufacturing facilities to Europe. Now, there are plenty of manufacturing facilities already in Europe. Global Foundries has its Dresden fab. Uh, Intel has its Lexlip fab in Ireland. And there are a few other non-leading edge, non-critical fabs also around the continent. What Intel's plan here is to invest more and more money and take advantage of the EU Chips Act. I almost said UK Chips Act. We don't have a Chips Act. The EU Chips Act to build up a manufacturing base inside Europe. Now, part of this ordeal is to kind of take manufacturing percentage-wise outside of Asia. About 80% of semiconductors are still being built in Asia and bring it to places like the US and the EU. And the EU, um, Ursula von der Leyen said during this presentation that the commitment is for the EU to have 20% of the world's silicon semiconductor production by the end of the decade. Ladies and gentlemen, a month ago, the Commission presented the European Chips Act. With this act, we want to make Europe a leader in the global semiconductor production. And we also want to strengthen our resilience with homegrown, secure technologies, which are invaluable assets in the turbulent world we live in. Our goal is to have 20% of the world's microchips production in Europe by 2030. That's twice as much as today, in a market that is set to double in the next decade. Will it get there? Not quite sure. However, the noises Pat Gelsinger was making on behalf of Intel today are putting it in that direction. Now, Intel is the first major leading edge foundry player to start talking about building fabs inside Europe. As I said, they already have the uh, Lexlip fab in Ireland. And if you want to include Israel in Europe, they've also got the, uh, the fabs over there. However, today's announcement, the biggest chunk of the money in Pat Gelsinger's announcement today was about the creation of two new fabs in Magdeburg in Germany. Well, in phase one, we are planning to invest 17 billion euros to establish two brand new, first of its kind semiconductor fabs in Magdeburg, Germany. These two fabs at an initial projected cost of $17 billion are designed to be planning for now, construction in 2023, and then production in 2027 using Angstrom level, which by you know, 2018A and stuff beyond, which might be available come 2027, are going to be based inside these facilities. This facility is going to be used for Intel and Intel Foundry services. And the area itself, Pat Gelsinger was saying, is going to become part of this new Silicon Junction, kind of like Silicon Valley, but for Europe. And because a junction is a thing in the electronics, that's where all the tie-in is. However, Pat Gelsinger's tweet on this didn't even capitalize Silicon Junction, so not too sure how committed they are to that name. We are referring to our new planned Germany site as the Silicon Junction, mm. because it should be poised to connect the technology hubs across the country and region. But the idea is that in Magdeburg, with the start of two new leading edge fabs, they can develop the infrastructure around that area with help from the local government to build out more jobs, more manufacturing facilities, and in the same way in the US that manufacturing is kind of centered around uh, Arizona and Austin, 
that maybe this will become one of the main semiconductor hubs in Europe. So as part of this build out in Magdeburg, Intel is saying 7,000 local construction jobs during the project, 3,000 Intel high tech jobs when it's complete, and then tens of thousands of jobs in the local area for supportive infrastructure. This is assuming the deal is plans to go ahead. Uh, as far as we understand it, there are still permits and other things that need to be worked out. And as Pat keeps saying, external investment. By this, he means tax breaks, the EU Chips Act, that sort of thing. The second big topic of the presentation was the expansion of the Ireland Fab in Lexlip. Uh, Fab 34 is currently being built out to support Intel 4. And Pat said that another 12, or he said another 12 billion euros. I think he said 12 billion, or at least he said another. Some of that may probably already be spent in the current build out of that Fab. Though the point is uh, Intel 4 leading edge EUV process coming to Europe, coming to Ireland. The area has already had 17 billion euros of investment. However, the additional 12 billion, or as part of what has been spent, should provide an extra 50% capacity. We are also expanding foundry services at our Leipzig site in Ireland, a project that doubles the manufacturing space to bring our Intel 4 process technology to Europe. On top of those two areas, Intel is also pledging money to build additional facilities around Europe. So the next big announcement was that they are currently in discussions with Italy to build a back-end leading-edge fab there. Um, that's to kind of help expand the Tower plus ST Micro partnership that already exists in Italy. And as part of that, Intel has said that that could potentially involve an investment up to 4.5 billion euros. Notice how we said potential there, though because it still requires all the permits to be worked out. Um, I'm not really a fan of saying that you're going to invest money if there's still questions on the table that might stop it going through. But this is what uh, this is what Pat is doing. In terms of that back-end manufacturing and additional packaging, uh, Intel is saying another 1,500 Intel jobs, another 3,500 construction jobs, and then, of course, again, infrastructure jobs. Should everything go through, this additional facility should be online somewhere between 2025 and 2027, which is actually a big window. And that big window is probably because permits still have to be completed. Next, we move on to additional R&D facilities that are coming to Europe. Uh, Intel has said that they will start a new R&D hub in France, in uh, Plateau uh, de Saclay, France, just making sure I get that right. This is where they're going to do more investment in uh, HPC and AI, especially as uh, Europe is becoming more and more a center of HPC, high performance computing. We're talking supercomputers and that sort of stuff. Also, the demand for AI in things like uh, automotive, uh, in, in uh, pharma pharmaceuticals, oil and gas, big center uh, in mainland Europe. And that, that center, that Intel center there is to help all of that. On top of which, there'll be an Intel Foundry Services Design Center, also in France, to help Foundry Service customers build their chips. The hub in France, Pat says, will produce an additional 1,000 jobs, of which 450 will be by the end of 2024. So given those numbers, all the numbers I've said about jobs so far, consider them end-of-decade numbers, because obviously there is a ramp-up to a lot of these things. It's a bit funny saying, you know, three and a half thousand jobs when really it's three and a half thousand jobs maybe in 2027. So keep that in mind. On top of this, Poland in Gdansk, that's getting additional investment to increase the lab space there by 50% for some of their projects. Also, one of the biggest um, announcements I think of this is that they're going to be uh, joint labs with the Barcelona Supercomputing Center to work on Zeta scale. Now, if you've not watched my interview with uh, Intel's Raj Kaduri about Zscale, I'll put a link up here uh, for you to have a look. But in terms of Zscale, Intel wants to reach 1,000x compute over current Exascale by that 2027 timeframe. And this is a co-joined lab with Barcelona Supercomputing Center to help develop that Zscale system. This brings in a lot of questions like, would the first Zscale system be built in Barcelona? Does that mean it won't be built in the US? Isn't there something about national security and having the most powerful supercomputers built in the US part of Intel's whole messaging right now? It's kind of a weird arrangement, but Intel is relying on having all those deep investments with companies inside Europe. Now, normally when we say European companies on leading edge of, say, manufacturing and equipment and utilities, we're speaking about 
uh, IMEX, EA Letty, Soytech, ASML. Out of all the partners there, though, the only one that presented in Intel's announcement today was IMEC. And I am very excited to strongly extend this partnership. I'm really surprised they weren't able to get anybody else um, for, the, for that additional, you know, sort of additional customer uh, partnership video type stuff. There are a lot of politicians, but only IMEC was actually saying something, you know, face to camera with words. Overall, Intel is saying that their investment over the next decade in Europe will be 80 billion euros. Investing up to 80 billion euros in the EU over the next decade. Of which today, if everything announced today goes forward, that is only 33 billion euros of that amount. So exactly what else comes to mind over the next decade? Well, perhaps we're talking about the second half of the next 10 years. So, you know, 2027 to 2032, maybe that's where the rest of the money will be spent. Maybe that's building out more fabs, more capacity, more investment in research or in foundry services. Future Ian here. Just to pick up on a thing I've noticed. When Intel says invest, what they really mean is spend. So in this case, where they're saying they will invest 80 billion euros, what that might mean is that they're purchasing ASML machines and that counts as a quote unquote investment when really what they're doing is spending. Keep that in the back of your mind every time Intel says invest. Though, as Pat keeps saying, it depends on external financial investment and guarantees as well, with the EU Chips Act being up to 43 billion euros. Exactly how much Intel will get of that, don't know yet. Probably have to go through a lot of processes to do it. Financial support. But overall, I get it. I mean, everyone wants chips. All the companies that have anything that's digital need chips so let's get it out there whether it has to be leading edge or more sort of you know 45 60 90 nanometer type stuff we need the facilities to manufacture it and the demand for these facilities is at an all-time high intel is the first to announce their plans inside europe i highly suspect that tsmc and samsung will say something at some point whether they want to build more in the us or do something in europe the Europe market is a little bit different to most because the traditional Europe market doesn't necessarily require leading edge. All those automotive chips, like I said, are on older process nodes. So the capacity for those needs to grow. Um, you know, EU has a little bit of aerospace. Maybe that might need leading edge or that needs, you know, um, space resilient silicon. There's also the European supercomputing project using the uh, Cypel uh, rear arm based processor along with Ponte Vecchio so there's a tie in there with Intel but the point is a lot of these a lot of what's being announced today still needs to go through and pass and tick all the boxes and then it's build out over the next five years so realistically aside from Intel 4 being built in Ireland right now the next fab in, the Ma in Magdeburg as part of this announcement won't actually start producing chips until 2027 and there have been uh, some analysts wondering exactly where demand will go between now and then. Because if demand craters, then Intel might just be left with an empty shell full of tools. On the Magdeburg fabs, Intel specifically said that it will be the size of two World Cup football pitches. I must, yeah, at, at that size, it doesn't really matter whether it's what type of football pitch it is. Though looking at the numbers of that sort of space where it's needed... You're probably looking from somewhere between twenty to thirty to forty thousand wafer starts per month, maybe as high as fifty thousand wafer starts per month, uh, which you know is six hundred thousand at the top end, six hundred thousand uh, wafers a year. And Intel already produces two million as part of its own, and then two million as part of Tower. So maybe we're looking at you know that sort of range. I think it's a bit less than going to be less than six hundred thousand a year. We're maybe looking at sort of four three hundred thousand a year. Leading edge process nodes at Magdeburg, maybe it's another place to go visit. Just to be serious, right now, a lot of what Pat Gelsinger is doing now is posturing and positioning for the additional money that these chips acts, both in the US and the EU, are going to provide. As a company, Intel wants to make money, and if they need to build facilities, then any tax breaks or additional investment from other sources, they're going to fight tooth and nail to get. In the same way that a sports ball team will try and uh, lobby local government to build their stadium, 
Intel's almost doing the same thing here. And uh, just to bring jobs and money and technical expertise into those areas. Still, there is work ahead to secure the necessary construction and other permits, as well as the financial support needed to make the project competitive. Financial support. Financial support. Financial support. In my mind in all of this, the thing that I enjoy most is that they're saying the right words. The thing that I hate the most is that they're saying words, really. And it, need, it needs to be done. It needs to, what people do you have in place? What stage are you at? Right now, it's really super high level, almost to the point where it's superficial.